In tonight's Dateline Defense, the situation in Syria. Russian forces have continued to bomb rebel-held territories in the country, including anti-Assad areas. Where does this leave the U.S. operation to fight ISIS? Joining me tonight with the latest is retired Army Colonel Douglas McGregor. He's a decorated combat veteran, author, Ph.D., and executive vice president of the Burke McGregor Group. Doug, for the past few weeks, Russian forces have conducted multiple airstrikes in Syria, some against ISIS and others against groups determined to overthrow the Syrian president, Assad. Meanwhile, the U.S. has been supplying ammunition to some rebel groups hoping to get Assad out of power. Is the U.S. fighting a losing battle here or a proxy war or both? Well, I think we've been fighting a losing battle for a long time. First of all, we're not even confident to the people that we've been arming and, and what their real loyalties are, what their real agendas are. We've been searching for these so-called moderates, but quite frankly, all of the Sunni Islamists, all of the Sunni Muslim Arabs that are operating inside uh, Syria are opposed to Mr. Assad, and, and their first priority is to attack Mr. Assad. Another challenge facing the U.S. in its fight against Syria is the lack of support from its allies. A recent report, Doug, showed a steady decline in coalition missions in the region. What happened? Well, keep a couple of things in mind. First of all, in Syria, Russia is absolutely determined to destroy opposition to Assad and stabilize his government. When you move beyond Syria and down into Iraq, that's when you discover that your so-called allies, friends and partners are overwhelmingly Sunni Arabs and Turks. They're not terribly excited about fighting ISIS because ISIS is ultimately uh, confronting Iran and Iran's dominance in the region along with the Kurds. So we can't really expect much of them uh, in, in that connection. Secondly, these are very small forces. Uh, all of these Arab states, with the exception, of course, of Turkey, have very, very, very few forces. There's no sustainability, no depth in them. Republican presidential hopeful Senator Ted Cruz said the U.S. should get out of Syria, adding that America has no business in the country's civil war. Is he right? Should the U.S. leave it alone? He's right about everything except the terms civil war because Syria and Iraq no longer exist. These states went out of existence, and we unfortunately have been insisting on their reconstitution. The Russians are smarter. They've decided they don't care about Syria as a construct. What they're concerned about is Mr. Assad. So. Mr. Mr. Cruz, or Senator Cruz, is absolutely right. We should disengage quickly from that mess. Putin met with Assad. It was kept a secret until he was, till Assad was flown back by a Russian jet back to his country of Syria. While that's a mess, let's switch gears to Israel now, Doug. Ongoing clashes in the country have citizens on high alert. Lone wolf attacks by young Palestinians are causing death and chaos. Explain what's going on. There are a number of factors that are leading to what looks like another intifada, another uprising. First and foremost, the Palestinians, who are all Sunni Muslim Arabs, see an opportunity because of turmoil across the region to attack the Israelis. Every attempt to attack them in, a, in an organized fashion has failed. And so what you have now is the antithesis of organization, the not just the lone wolf, but packs of lone wolves. The Israelis have responded as best they can, but there is no easy solution. The Israelis want to set up barriers, but when you do that, you ultimately divide, in particular, Jerusalem. Many Palestinians say the only way to end the conflict is for the Israelis to end their occupation of the region. Are they right, Doug, or could a two-state solution ever work? Well, a two-state solution is attractive, and there are many Israelis that would like to see it. The problem with the two-state solution is this second state, this Palestinian Arab state, looks an awful lot like an organized crime state to the Israelis. How do they guarantee their security under those circumstances if they have no influence whatsoever in those Arab areas? Let's switch gears one more time around the world because you're very familiar with this topic, having traveled around the world, being in the military. Bring us up to date on the migrant crisis in Europe. Well, I had an opportunity to see this crisis up close because I moved from northern Germany down to southern Germany. To give you an example of the, the confusion that reigns over there right now, there are far, far too many of these migrants pouring into Germany than the Germans can ultimately help. There simply aren't any facilities for them. So at the moment, for instance, in one area up in the Harz Mountains in northern Germany, they're planning to bring 1,500 so-called Muslim migrants into a town of less than 1,000 Germans in a small village. They don't have the facilities, so they're going to start putting them in a gymnasium, into schools, and they will disrupt the lives of those people on a scale that we can't imagine. Simultaneously, they're running out of doctors, running out of nurses, running out of hospital rooms, running out of facilities to deal with the multitude of diseases that are coming with these people. 
And then, of course, there's the criminality and there's the warfare within the refugee or migrant waves themselves between Turks and Kurds, Pakistanis, Afghans, and so forth. Not so to mention the controversy, Doug, let me interrupt, but not to mention the controversy of what was East Germany and the sense of nationalism. They don't want the migrants, period. No, in fact, one German said to me, we, we were just delighted to get rid of the Russians who were here for several decades. We absolutely don't want Muslims. So I think that's true. But you're also beginning to see people in the West who want to be helpful, who want to be supportive, who are beginning to ask, how do we finance this? And the truth is that they're running through cash, billions of euros, very, very rapidly to take care of this. The expectation is that taxes will be hiked and facilities will be overcrowded and crime will rise. You put those together, and I think Mrs. Merkel is facing potentially a political revolution. I think so. Major problem we'll keep following here on Capital Insider. Retired Army Colonel Douglas McGregor, Executive Vice President of the Burke McGregor Group. Thanks, Doug. Thank you.